Right, so today Danielle is off on a girl's trip to Ocean City where she reveals some insane secrets about her previous relationship and a brand new man enters the scene. So last time out, Daniela Muhammad met up in person for the first time since their divorce over three years ago. They had been speaking as friends for about eight months when inevitably Muhammad's job as a truck driver found him back in Ohio. So they met up for a coffee where Muhammad gave Danielle a half assed apology for everything that had happened between them and the pair left on good terms. Although Danielle of course was still crying. Well now that Danielle has finally got the closure she was so desperately seeking, she's off to Ocean City with three of her friends to find herself a new man. After seeing Muhammad, I feel like I can really move on and really try to put myself out there. It's about time. She has had one date since Muhammad, and that's if you can even call it a date because she got stood up on it. I don't think I'll ever be convinced that she wouldn't go running straight back to Muhammad if he asked her to, but it does seem at least that she's finally willing to start trying to find someone else. Today, I am heading to go on a girl's trip with my single friends because I am single <laughs> and I'm somewhat ready to mingle. I actually cannot wait to see her trying to flirt. We've been watching her interacting with Muhammad in such a bizarre way for so long, it is impossible to know what to expect. I mean, it can't get much drier than that coffee date with Muhammad, but I get the feeling she's gonna be just as stumped. I'm not good at approaching men on my own. I get nervous and so it's like, I don't know how to do it. To be fair, I want to laugh here, but Danielle saying that she gets nervous in social situations is the most relatable thing she has ever said. You can't really blame her for being inexperienced as well because the father of her children went to the same high school as her and her relationship with Muhammad started online. So she's never really had to approach anyone before. Everyone else has probably already dated when they were teenagers in their 20s. How do you start when you're 47? I don't know how to. She might be a little bit rusty, but I feel like as long as she avoids talking about Muhammad or anything that happened in their relationship and obviously doesn't get too obsessed with the person she's talking to, I think she'll be all right. Plus, she's not there on her own. She's got Lauren, Lexi and Michelle there to help wing women her. I'm not exactly sure what to expect. I mean, it's a single girl's trip, so anything could happen. <laughs> Ah, interesting. Last week when they were on that group FaceTime talking about the trip, Danielle completely dismissed any suggestions that she might end up getting intimate with someone. But now it sounds like the doors might be open to anything. Maybe the closure she got from Muhammad has awoken something inside of her. Assuming that is what she means, and not that she's going to go crazy and order three ice cream scoops instead of two. Three years ago, we messaged Danielle on Instagram and we met up for drinks. She's so friendly and quirky and interesting. And famous? I know she's not exactly Kim Kardashian, but I take it they messaged Danielle on Instagram knowing who she was. And so maybe now they're getting the airtime that perhaps they had their eye on from the beginning. I'm not usually one for assuming the worst in people, but you do have to ask if they'd still be friends with Danielle. If her relationship with Muhammad wasn't ever televised and she didn't have over a quarter of a million followers. The girl's trip to find love is for everybody, but... We really want to help Danielle because she's the one who has struggled the most. It does seem like Danielle is a good version of herself around them because she's always giggling like a child. So hopefully they can bring that out of her more on this trip. And you never know, maybe if someone sees her like that, she might have a chance of a holiday romance. Well, on the car journey there, all the girls take it in turns talking about men and why they don't trust them. And eventually it comes around to Danielle who gives us some coveted law. She reveals that she's not friends with the father of her children because he ended up leaving her for one of her close friends with whom she also worked and it gets worse. But first, a quick message from today's paid partnership with BetterHelp. Like many of us, Danielle has a lot on her plate, from dealing with heartbreak to finding her place in her new friendship group and to making her way in the new modern world of dating. Thankfully, whatever you're dealing with, like Danielle, you don't have to go through it alone and therapy can give you the tools to approach your life in a very different way. Unfortunately, finding a therapist can be hard and finding the right therapist can be even harder. That is why BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy accessible. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easy because it's online it's remote 
And by filling out just a few questions, BetterHelp can match you with a credentialed therapist in as little as a few days. And if you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new one at no additional cost. It's so easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. All you have to do is click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com forward slash Arthur TV. Not only does that link help support this channel, it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp, so you can connect with the therapist and see if it helps you. So if you're struggling with anything at all, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Huge thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. Now let's get back to finding out more about the woman that Danielle's ex left her for. She used to come over my house for pure romance parties to buy sex toys. What? That's awkward. And she used to live Why? in front of us. This is absolutely wild. Not only the story about who her ex left her for, but also the fact that she used to host pure romance parties and sell sex toys. She said she only slept with Muhammad once in their entire relationship. I bet she was thirsty. You know what's crazy as well? She still does this. She posted to her Facebook announcing that she was starting a company with pure romance, which by the way is a multi-level marketing company, and then posted to Instagram advertising coochie shaving cream, which apparently she's now selling on her website. You potentially sold her like sex toys and shit that she then used on your ex-husband? Yes. With oh well, we weren't never married. Her friend did not need to make that point explicitly. I mean, everyone was probably thinking it, but she didn't need to say it out loud. Danielle is not one for getting over things quickly. She did not need that image back in her head. And to be honest, neither did we. At least Danielle made a little bit of commission, I guess. Anyway, Danielle then goes on to talk about her ex, with whom she was in a relationship for 22 years. We never got married because we figured we were making it this far. Why do something and have it break? How fragile must their relationship have been for them to be genuinely scared that getting married two decades in would have ended it? Surely if it can survive four kids, it can survive a wedding, no? I'm guessing this was all the guy's decision though, because there is no way that Danielle avoided it for 22 years with him, only to jump into it six months in with Muhammad. I think that is one of the reasons why I have trust issues, because it's betrayal. It hurts. Maybe that's why her closest friends when she was with Muhammad were Beth and Walmart Tom. There was just absolutely no chance that he was going to leave her for either of them, was there? She must be pretty wounded though. Whether you believe that Muhammad used her for a green card or not, she does. So having her first partner leave her for someone else and having her second husband leave her as soon as he got what he wanted, at least in her mind, must make the idea of trusting anyone ever again pretty tough. But for now at least, it seems like she really is willing to give it a shot. Daniel, I really think we're going to find you a guy. You think? I seriously do. I rate the confidence. Well, after a long drive, the girls finally arrive at Ocean City. After dropping off their bags, the girls head out for brunch where they reveal something to Danielle. Given how nervous Danielle seemed when discussing the possibility of meeting a man, the girls decided a few days ago to make a profile on a dating app and search for potential matches in Ocean City ahead of their arrival. I mean, I'm not upset with her, but I don't like dating apps because I've had bad experience with them. That's how I met Muhammad, so that's scary. I feel like they could have waited a day or two before telling her this. They have just arrived and they are mounting pressure on her. I mean, it's a nice backup, but at least give her a chance to meet someone naturally. I'm not surprised at all that she is a bit shocked by it. And to ramp up the pressure even more, they reveal that they've matched her with a guy called Jason already. He's 49, okay. so he's around Perfect your age. age. See, isn't he cute? Oh, yeah. Is he genuinely interested? Yeah. <laughs> Danielle is understandably hesitant. The girl says she should have a call with him, but she says she's unsure because what happens if he doesn't like her? You can tell that she's really worried about getting hurt again and as a result, massively has her guard up. Eventually though, they convince her to give him a call after they're done with brunch. You look so <laughs> terrified right now. <laughs> I uh, am. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Dating is like yeah. a job interview. The Great. more you do it, the better it is. That's why I stay at my jobs for a long time. <laughs> see, this is the Danielle I was hoping to see. Laughing at herself, having a good time. 
understandably hesitant and lacking in confidence, but trying to remain positive. Taking her friend's point though, she does need to learn how to date, but she also needs to learn how to approach people. Again, they should have let her try her luck in real life first, and only told her about the dating profile if she was unsuccessful. Plus, they're all acting like dating coaches despite being single themselves. I'm not entirely sure that these are the people she should be taking advice from. Well, whether she likes it or not, she now has a date lined up. Next up, we're off to see how that date goes, and it is an absolute spectacle. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure you're subscribed down below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.